It's election day. The first hour of the morning is critical to opening on time and to your team's success. There are key actions that must be accomplished prior to the polls opening and are covered in your Getting Started checklist in your manual. Let's review them together. Arrive at your polling location no later than 5.30 a.m. If you are unable to get into your polling location, check to see if there is a key inside your election supply bag to provide access. If not, please call the PEO hotline immediately. Once inside the location, plug in the Board of Elections cell phone and ensure it remains charged and on all day and follow the 10X app procedures. We will demonstrate these procedures in more detail during your scheduled in-person training. Retrieve your worker list that has all the members of your team on it. As your team members arrive, check their names off the list. Locate the ADA folder in your supplies for compliance instructions and make the necessary adjustments at your location to accommodate all voters. Be sure that each member of your team completes the Oath Ethics Policy Acknowledgement Form. This is found in the Location Workbook. This is used as a payroll record as well, so ensure all team members, including yourself, complete this form. Ensure you administer the Oath of Office to all precinct election officials. As a reminder, if you learn that you are missing election supplies, please call the PEO hotline immediately. If any of your team members have not arrived in a timely manner, call the BOE as well. They have additional team members available and can send you a replacement. Ideally, the goal of the BOE is that all locations will be set up prior to election morning. We should still review the correct polling location setup, however. As a VLM and VLD, it is your job to oversee the setup of the voting location, including the machines, room arrangements, and placements of signs, flags, and temporary ADA equipment inside and outside. Your polling location should be set up to be efficient, convenient, safe, and accessible to all voters, including persons with disabilities. Although some polling locations offer a significant challenge, you need to ensure that the flow of traffic is logical and that all equipment can easily be assessed by election officials and voters. You can reference your manual for sample room layouts to ensure safety, accessibility, and distancing. Now, let's review the location setup guidelines. You have the authority to adjust your location setup to accommodate changes needed at your facility, including adjustments made for lack of outlets, walls, bleachers, or other barriers. We want you to ensure that voters can enter and exit easily and can cast their vote privately. Just keep in mind the following. Ballot counters must be placed at the exit of your voting area. Set up the roster tables within sight of the voting area entrance. Designate an area for provisional and regular voter paper ballot processing near the roster tables. This area should include a provisional paper ballot table, a regular paper ballot table, a back table with an easy access of the other two paper tables, an area for the provisional privacy booths, an area for the paper ballot privacy tables, and finally, set up the kiosk near the ballot markers. You are responsible for ensuring the placement of flags and voting and campaigning signs are posted throughout your location. Campaigning is prohibited within 100 feet of the entrance or entrances that voters must use, as well as within the entire building itself. These items are covered fully in your manual. As a reminder, be sure the location is set up for ADA compliance using the photos and diagrams in your ADA folder found in your election supplies. Ensure there is an unobstructed view for voters to sign in at the roster table. Working with the paper ballot judges, 
Ensure the paper tables and booths are set up for voting purposes. Lastly, ensure the machine judges have the equipment set up with safety and distancing in mind. Ballot counters must be placed at the exit of the polling location with appropriate signage from the machine cart. We have covered the majority of your responsibilities prior to the polls opening. We will now review each of the areas in the voting location so that you know how they are expected to be set up to accommodate voters and to process voters correctly and safely. Let's review the setup at the roster table. If you follow along in your manual, you will see which supplies you will find on the machine cart and in the VLM bag. For instance, green electronic poll bookcases are located on the machine cart. You'll also find extension cords, adapters, and power strips for the EPBs, red wire cutters, stands for state your name signs, 100 feet of string, notepad, and more. Other supplies are located in the VLM bag and at the bottom bin of the machine counter. The VLM or VLD has authority to adjust your location setup to account for your facility, outlets, walls, bleachers, etc., so that you can ensure efficient flow of voters as well as ensure voters' privacy. It is your job as a roster judge to participate in the location setup. Just keep in mind the following. You should set up roster tables within sight of the voting area entrance. Next, we'll set up the roster table where the voters check in. Place the following items on the roster table. Roster workbooks, location workbook, electronic poll book and printer, state your name signs, signing an official document sheet, blank ballot cards, and temporary stylus. You'll use these during the day to assist voters. Locate the green EPB cases in the machine cart. Record the green EPB case number from the TAN tag on the EPB handle onto the EPB security record form found in the blue section of your manual. Using the red-handled wire cutters found in compartment one, remove the security lock ties from the EPB cases and record the numbers on the EPB security record form. Place the used seals in the Save the Seals plastic Ziploc bag. Open the green EPB case and double-check the contents against the EPB components checklist. Remove from the case only the items to be used at the roster table. Printer, yellow and black EPB base, printer power supply cords, EPB stand arm, charging cord and charging adapter, and stylus. Connect the printer power cord to the printer power supply. Sometimes it helps if you place the printer back in the case face down to get a better angle and access to the back of the printer where the plug goes. The power cord connector has a round cylindrical end. This is the end that connects to the back of the printer. Plug the power cord connector into the back of the printer. If the plug doesn't connect easily, rotate cord until pins line up correctly. And finally, place the green EPB case in a secure location. Turn printer on using on-off switch on side two. If you don't see a green power light on the front panel, check the power cord connections and make sure the outlet has power. Retrieve the electronic poll books from the voting location manager and place them on a flat surface, face down. Work with the VLM to ensure each EPB is paired with the correct printer by matching the colored dots on each. Partially open the stand arm in order to access the green tabs. 
Pinch green tabs in and insert stand arm head into the circular opening on the back of the silver electronic pole pad. Rotate arm into position until you hear a click. The home button will be at the left side facing you when correctly positioned. Hold the stand arm while inserting it into the base. Do not push down on the electronic pole book. The screen may fall off and incur damage. Insert the lightning end of the EPB charging cord into the home button side of the EPB. Insert the USB end of the EPB charging cord into the white wall adapter and plug into the wall outlet or provided power strip. Power on the electronic pull book by pressing the button at the lower right edge. Your electronic pull book may go into sleep mode. That means that the screen may go dark. If that happens, press the circular home button and slide to unlock. When the home screen comes up, please check the following items for accuracy. Election name and date, top left-hand corner of the screen on the gray navigation bar. Polling location, lid number, directly under the election name and date. Check and count at zero, center of the gray bar under precinct records. Battery life is close to full, top right-hand corner of the screen. Ensure the EPB is charging as indicated by a lightning bolt in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. From the home screen, press Get Started. Ensure that a VLM or VLD has updated the absentee voters list using the iSync drive on all EPBs. They will insert it in the power port on the poll pad and a report will print out. Please double check that the VLM or VLD has reinserted the green power cable into the power port after the iSync has been removed. Ensure the voting location manager or voting location deputy and a member of a different political party log into the EPBs as outlined in the VLM section of the manual. Copies of both login codes can be found in the green EPB cases. You will only need one pair of codes to open all APBs. If it appears envelopes have been tampered with, contact the BOE hotline. Once the voting location manager or deputy has logged into all EPBs, check to ensure all EPBs are syncing with one another. To ensure all EPBs are synced, locate the number of EPBs icon in the upper right corner of one screen and ensure the number of EPBs shown is one less than the total number of EPBs, including the one at the paper ballot table. Check for printer connection. A green printer icon at the top of the right of the screen means you are connected. A red printer icon means you are disconnected. See troubleshooting your EPBs. Touch the green printer icon and select Test Print. A sample receipt will print. A few reminders concerning the electronic poll books. You'll only need one EPB opened and updated by uploading the absentee supplemental list to begin processing voters. We would like to reiterate, as a VLM or VOD, there are several important tasks that must be accomplished involving the electronic poll books prior to the polls opening at 6.30 a.m. These tasks can only be completed by you as the VLM or VLD. Updating the absentee voters list using the iSync drive. Performing the application login using the provided passwords and printing the supplemental absentee voter list from one of the electronic poll books. Let's review updating the absentee voter list. Starting with the first electronic poll book to have been set up, Update the absentee voter list by following these steps as outlined in the purple section of the manual. The first step is to retrieve the iSync drive from the yellow VLM pouch. Record the iSync drive number on the electronic poll book security record form. Temporarily disconnect the charging cord to be able to plug in the iSync drive. Remove the clear plastic cap from the iSync drive to reveal the lightning plug and insert this into the lightning port on the electronic poll book. Once the iSync update is downloaded, remember to replace the charging cord. 
On the screen, you will select Supplemental Import from the pop-up menu. Next, under Choose File, select the correct file. There should only be one file listed here. Now select the box that says Supplemental Import. At the warning prompt, be sure to select Continue. Once you see the Import Finished window, select OK. Next, select Done from the upper right corner of the window. And finally, press the X in the upper right corner of the electronic pull book to close this window. Now you can remove the iSync drive and repeat this process on all of the other electronic pull books. Once all electronic pull books have been updated, place the iSync drive in the red zipper pouch in the voter book. Keep in mind, if both the primary and backup iSync drives fail to upload, you can still open your location using the supplemental paper list found in your election supplies. Voters whose names appear on the supplemental paper list must vote provisionally until the upload is successfully completed. After updating the absentee voter list on all electronic poll books, including the electronic poll book at the paper table, you as the VLM or VLD should secure the assistance of a PEO of a different political party to log in to each electronic poll book that was updated. Retrieve the envelopes that contain the application login passwords found in any of the green electronic poll book cases. All the cases will contain the same passwords so you will only need to open one pair of envelopes from these cases. Using one of the passwords, touch Get Started and log into the electronic poll book and follow the on-screen prompts to enter the second password. Repeat this login application process for all electronic poll books, including the one at the paper table. Now that all the electronic poll books have been updated and logged in, at any time prior to 6.30 a.m., you as the VLM or VLD must print the supplemental absentee voter list from any of the electronic poll books at the roster table. Because your electronic poll books are synced in the location, you will only print this report one time from one of the electronic poll books at the roster table. Let's review the steps for printing the supplemental absentee voter list. From the home screen, touch Menu. Then select Summary Report. Now touch the Absentee tab. Select Print. Once the printing is complete, select OK from the Finish Printing window. Now touch the Check-ins tab. Select Print. Lastly, select OK from the Finish Printing window. Deliver both reports to a roster judge to post by 6.30 a.m. along with the pink Register of Voters list. All three of these items must remain posted in the location all day. As an important reminder, you only need one electronic poll book to be opened and updated to open on time to begin processing voters. This is helpful to keep top of mind, especially if your iSync drive update is still completing on the other electronic poll books. Be sure to finish uploading the supplemental absentee list using the iSync drive and completing the application login to all of your electronic poll books, ensuring they all are available for processing voters throughout the day. Additionally, the checklist for these processes can be found in the purple section of your manual. If you are a VLM, once the polls are open, you have oversight at the roster table throughout the day to help assist your roster judges in processing voters correctly. However, 
Keep in mind that you have management responsibilities for assisting your entire team and any voters in the entire polling location. Now let's review the setup at the paper table. Your next step will be setting up your station and organizing these supplies in your workspace. Your manual shows samples of how your voting location and your PBJ station might be set up. When setting up, check with your VLM to see where your area should be arranged. An illustration of how your station should be arranged and sample views of your table setup are in your manual. They offer ideas of how to best access your materials throughout the day. As I mentioned, many of your supplies come from the main ballot bin of the ballot counter. They are your voted ballot bag and unvoted ballot bags, pads of paper ballots, white spoiled ballot envelope, provisional ballot notice, yellow provisional ballot envelopes, pink curbside voting envelopes, and a reason for provisional ballot slip envelope. You also have a paper ballot judge workbook. Inside the workbook, you'll find the ballot station security seal form, ballot reconciliation sheet, and the ballot issued log form. You'll use all these materials throughout the day. When working with the voted and unvoted bags, you will need to get a ballot bag security seal from the seals pouch in the VOTR book or voter book, which is in the Department 2 on the machine cart. If you don't see it, check with your VLM. We start with the voted bag. It's very important that we record and keep track of the seals we use on the voted ballot bag. Take a look at the sample of the ballot station security seal form. It shows you where to record this seal number. A sample is located in your manual. Record the number of the new seal on the pre-printed ballot station security seal form where it says, opening the polls, voted ballot bags, zippered side, apply new seal. After you've checked the voted bag to verify that it is empty, zip it closed and apply the security seal. The seal on the zipper end of the bag must not be removed and must be intact when your VLM returns the bag to the BOE warehouse at the end of the day. The bag is now ready for voters to insert the provisional ballot envelopes with their ballots sealed inside. Keep the voted bag in a secure location within your site at all times. Depending on the setup of your location, you might keep it on your table or hang it on a chair. The unvoted ballot bag will be empty and won't be used at this point. It should be stored on the machine cart until needed at the closing of the polls. If your location received more than one voted bag, return it and the unvoted ballot bag to the machine cart until needed. Most locations will have more than one style ballot. The ballots will be grouped together according to the ballot style, which is noted by ED on the ballot stubs. Ballots are in shrink wrap packages of 25. Do not open the ballot packages until you need a ballot from that pad. Part of your record keeping is to verify that you have received the correct number of ballots and the correct ballot styles for your location. This information is listed on the pre-printed ballot reconciliation sheet in your blue PBJ workbook with your ballots. The precinct identifier and ballot style of the ballots in the package is shown on the bottom left of each ballot pad. Call the BOE's PEO hotline immediately if you're missing any of the ballots listed on your reconciliation form. Now we'll look at how the paper ballot captain will set up the electronic poll book. The paper ballot captain has responsibility for the electronic poll book, or EPB. The captain will first retrieve the EPB accessory case from the machine cart and set it up. Using the red handle wire cutters found in compartment 1 on top of the machine cart, remove the security lock tie from the EPB case. Open the green EPB accessory case and double check the contents 
against the EPB component checklist inside the case. Remove from the case only the items to be used at the paper provisional table. Those are the yellow and black EPB case, the arm from the EPB, the charging cord and adapter, and the stylus. Remember at the paper table, the printer will not be used. The printer and the black power cords will remain in the case. Once you set up your EPB accessories, your voting location manager or voting location deputy will bring one of the electronic poll books to your table. Work with the VLM to ensure your EPB is paired with the correct printer by matching the number on the EPB to the number on your case. The VLM will also record the number from the red security lock tie. Now you're ready to set up the EPB. Partially open the stand arm in order to access the green tabs. Pinch the green tabs and insert the stand arm head into the circular opening on the back of the silver electronic pole pad. Rotate the arm into position until you hear a click. The home button will be at the left side facing you when correctly positioned. Insert the stand arm into the base. Hold the stand arm while inserting. Do not push down on the EPB. Insert the lightning end of the EPB charging cord into the home button side of the EPB. Insert the USB end of the EPB charging cord into the white wall adapter and plug into the wall outlet or provided power strip. Power on the electronic pull book by pressing the button at the lower right edge. After your EPB is set up, your voting location manager or voting location deputy and a member of a different political party will come to your station to log into the EPB as outlined in the VLM section of the manual. There are different login codes for Democrat and Republican managers to complete the process. Copies of both login codes will be found in the green EPB cases. They are the same in every case, so the VLM will only need one pair of codes to every EPB. If it appears envelopes have been tampered with, contact the BOE PEO hotline. Once the EPBs have logged in, you will need to check several things on the screen. When the home screen comes up, please check the following items for accuracy. The election name and date at the top left-hand corner of the screen in the gray navigation bar. The polling location, LID number, which is directly under the election name and date. Check that battery life is close to full. That icon is at the top right-hand corner of the screen. Ensure the EPB is charging as indicated by a lightning bolt in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Check that all the EPBs are syncing with one another by locating the number of EPBs icon in the upper right corner of the screen. The total number of EPBs shown should be one less than the total number of EPBs at your location, including those at the roster table. If you are a VLD, once the polls are open, you have oversight at the paper table throughout the day to help assist your paper ballot judges in processing voters correctly. However, keep in mind that you have management responsibilities for assisting your entire team and any voters in the entire polling location. The final area we need to review is the voting machine area. There are three key pieces of equipment in this area, so let's see each of these items set up for Election Day. The ballot counter is used to scan and tabulate all inserted regular ballots. We will demonstrate the opening of the ballot counter. Retrieve the keys for the ballot counter. You'll find them in the red results tape pouch in the red voter book on the machine carts. Check the lid number on your ballot counters to ensure they are in the correct polling location. If you have the wrong ballot counter, call the PEO hotline. Roll the ballot counter to the paper table. Using the red wire cutters found in the storage cart, 
remove the blue security lock tie seal from the main ballot bin, bottom door of the ballot counter, and record the number on certificate number one in the location workbook. Place the old seal in the used seal bag found in the brown office supply kit from the machine cart. Open the main ballot bin door using the flat key and remove the ballot box. Remove pre-printed ballot pads and paper table supplies from the ballot box and leave at the paper table. Ensure blank ballot cards are taken to the roster table. Return the empty box to the main ballot bin. It's very important that the lid of the ballot box remain open so the ballots can fully drop inside the box. Lock the door using the flat key and retrieve a new blue security lock tie seal from the seals pouch in the red voter book and place on the main ballot bin. Record the new seal number on certificate number one. Record the number of the blue security lock tie seal on the auxiliary bin, which is the top door of the ballot counter, on certificate number one, and do not remove this seal. Move the ballot counter, positioning it at the exit door of the location as illustrated on the location setup page example. You will find the location setup page in the ADA folder inside the VLM bag. Unlock the back compartment of the ballot counter using the flat key. Remove the power cord and plug into a wall outlet. Be sure to check for a green power on light in the upper right corner of the cord block. If no green light or power, check the cord connection to the power cord block. Look through the left side plexi window below the power cord block. An amber light ensures the battery pack is charging. A solid green light shows the battery pack is fully charged. If no light or power, run an extension cord to the ballot counter from another outlet. Remember the unit must remain at the exit door. Keep the back compartment door open while the equipment is connected to power. Lock the front wheels on the front of the ballot counter. Remove the blue security lock tie seal from the lid of the ballot counter and record the number on certificate number one. Place the old seal in the used seal bag. Unlock the lid of the ballot counter using the flat key. Open the latches and raise the lid to the upright position. Verify that the tamper-proof tape on the battery compartment has not been broken or removed. If it has been compromised, call the PEO hotline. The telephone number is located at the bottom of the inside cover of your manual. Raise the screen. The opening process will begin automatically after a few seconds. Record the number of the blue tamper-proof seal on the USB power button compartment on certificate number one. Do not remove this seal. A configuration report will print automatically during the opening process. Do not remove the report from the ballot counter at this time. Three green check marks will appear on the screen indicating the polls are ready to be opened. Record the public count and protective count from the screen on certificate number one. The public count should be zero. If it is not, have the VLM contact the PEO hotline immediately. On the screen, verify that the polling location, date, and time are correct. Select the Open Poll button on screen. A ballot status accounting report will print automatically. Remove the configuration report and the connected ballot status accounting report and place both in the red results tape pouch in the voter book. Select Go to Voting Mode. If you have more than one ballot counter in your location, you will repeat these instructions for all of them. The ballot counter is now ready to process votes. A PEO must always be positioned at the ballot counter to monitor all voters to ensure that they have deposited their ballots into the ballot counter. This is where the I Voted Today stickers will be handed out to each voter after they have inserted their ballot and cast their vote. Certificate number one is in the location workbook. You will be completing a ballot counter row for each ballot counter in your location. You will need to record the blue security lock tie number that you removed from the main ballot bin and the new blue security lock tie number that is being added to the main ballot bin. 
Record the blue security lock tie number on the auxiliary bin, and remember we did not remove this blue security lock tie. Record the blue security lock tie number that was removed from the counter lid. Record the blue tamper proof security seal number located on the USB power button compartment. Record the public and protective count from the ballot counter screen. You will repeat this process for all ballot counters assigned to your location. We are going to demonstrate setting up the ballot marker tables. Refer to the location setup page in the red ADA folder for proper table setup to best ensure voter privacy. Lay the tables flat on the floor, face down, and unfold. It's suggested that two PEOs work together to open tables. Press the gray tab at the center of the table's underside to prevent the table from collapsing. Open both legs out and ensure they lock or click into place. Press in the silver pegs and extend the legs. Legs are fully extended when silver pegs are locked into the uppermost holes. Stand the tables upright. The ballot marker is a touchscreen device that is used to mark ballot cards, which are then printed with the selections of the voter. Using the red wire cutters, remove the blue security lock ties from the ballot marker bags. Record on certificate number one. Put used lock ties in the used seal bag in the office supplies kit. Remove the power cord from the ballot marker bag. Remove ballot marker from the main compartment of the bag. It is suggested that two PEOs work as a team to complete this step. Lay the ballot marker flat on the table, screen side down. Pull the silver stand up until it stops, then squeeze sides inward and continue to slide stand until it locks into a 90 degree position. Connect the power cord to the power cord block and plug into a power outlet. You may need an extension cord. Retrieve all ATV scanners from the cake box. Remember the cake box is located on the machine cart. Match the number and color dot on each ATV scanner with the number, upper left side and color dot, on its corresponding ballot marker. Connect the gray cable of the ATV scanner to the USB port just above the power block cable. There is no power button on the ATV scanner. It will power on when the ballot marker unit is powered on. Stand ballot marker up on table. Verify that the green power light plug icon in the lower left corner is glowing on ADA pad side. All ballot markers and kiosks have an ADA pad attached. Remove the tamper-proof seal from the left side access door and record the number on certificate number one. Use the barrel key to open the left side access door, ADA pad side. To ensure you don't stretch the cord, open the door slightly, lift the cord out of the notch, then fully open the door. Verify that the USB stick is inserted. Do not remove. Verify that the ballot marker is in the voter mode. Press the on button to power on the ballot marker. You'll hear a beep. If the unit battery is charging successfully, the battery indicator icon on the front of the unit will glow green. Close and lock the left side access door, ensuring the cord is back in its notch. Place a voter privacy shield around the ballot marker. Tuck the bottom tabs underneath the ballot marker to hold the shield firmly in place. Verify that there are five check marks on the screen. This may take a few minutes. There should be no need to calibrate the machine. Verify that the correct lid number appears on the screen. If not, call the PEO hotline. Select OK on the screen. Attach at least one authority to vote envelope to the exterior of a privacy shield on each ballot marker table. You will not have an envelope for every ballot marker. You are now ready to process voters. Remember, two ballot markers can be placed on each ballot marker table. Repeat this process for all ballot markers that are in your location. We are continuing with the completion of certificate number one, which is in the location workbook. Go to the tabletop ballot markers section located at the bottom portion of certificate number one. Record the blue security lock tie number that you removed from the ballot marker bag in the first column. 
record the blue tamper-proof security seal number in the next column that was removed from the left side access door of the ballot marker. You will repeat this process for all ballot markers assigned to your location. The kiosk is a ballot marker in a case on a stand that allows the voter to cast a ballot. Locate the kiosk in the polling location. Verify that the lid number on the kiosk is correct for your polling location. We strongly suggest that two PEOs work as a team to set up the kiosk. Position the kiosk according to the Location Setup page from the ADA folder. You should not try to move the unit once it's in the upright position. With one person on each side of the unit, squeeze the yellow lever and raise the unit straight up. Release the lever and continue to raise until unit locks into place. Make sure it clicks. Remove the tamper-proof seal from the kiosk lid and record the number on certificate number one. Push the green tabs inward to release and tilt the front of the kiosk into the standing position notch. Connect the kiosk power cord to the back and connect the cable to a power outlet. Units can be daisy-chained together using the outlet located on the side of the unit. Locate the kiosk chute and record the blue security lock tie on certificate number one. Do not remove lock tie. With the handle facing backwards, connect the kiosk chute to the back side of the machine and push in until it clicks. Using the barrel key, open the front access door and raise the lid of the kiosk. Open the privacy panels from the lid and secure in the slots on the front of the kiosk. Open the scanner door to the right of the front access door to provide access to the ATV scanner. Lock the front access door. Verify there is a green power light, an outlet icon signifying there's power on the lower left corner of the ballot marker. Remove the tamper-proof seal from the left side access door and record the number on certificate number one. Use the barrel key to open the access door on the left side of the ballot marker, ADA pad side. Verify that the USB stick is inserted. Verify that the ballot marker is in the voter mode. Press the on button to power on the ballot marker. If the unit battery is charging successfully, the battery indicator icon will be green. Close and lock the access door, ensuring cord is back in its notch. Verify that all five check marks on the screen are green and the correct lid number is on the screen. If it is incorrect, call the PEO hotline. Select OK on the screen. Notice the ADA pad, headset, and accessible device port. Attach an authority to vote envelope to the side panel of the kiosk. Repeat this process for all kiosks in the location. Return the barrel key and flat key to the VLM. We will continue with the completion of certificate number one, which is in the location workbook. The kiosk has a section located below the ballot counter section on certificate number one. Record the blue security lock tie number from the kiosk chute. Remember that the blue security lock tie was not removed. Record the blue tamper-proof security seal number that was removed from the kiosk lid. Record the blue tamper-proof security seal number that was removed from the left side access door. Repeat this process for all kiosks that are assigned to your location.